The United States said it will ease restrictions on investment to Myanmar and quickly appoint an ambassador following historic by-elections on Sunday. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said the U.S. would start easing restrictions on U.S. investment and financial services in areas that seen supporting reforms in Myanmar. Officials said they were deciding the exact measures and time frame, but that one priority would be al to allow the use of credit cards in Myanmar, one of the few nations where MasterCard, Visa and American Express are never accepted. Clinton said the United States would complete formalities in the coming days to send an ambassador completing a promised upgrade to full relations after a two-decade gap. But Myanmar will stay under a number of tough sanctions set by the U.S. Congress, including a ban on its key exports, such as jade. Clinton said the United States was still pressing for release of all political prisoners and the end to restrictions on the hundreds recently freed. She also called for reconciliation with minority groups and the very favorable termination of any military cooperation between Myanmar and North Korea, which plans to launch a long-range rocket this month. In other steps, the U.S. will also open an office of the U.S. Agency for International Development in Myanmar to look at boosting its $35 million U.S. dollars in annual aid and private U.S. US organization will be allowed to conduct a greater range of work inside Myanmar, including on health and education. The European Union has also been seeking to reward Myanmar and is leaning toward a substantial removal of sanctions, a senior EU diplomat told AFP in Brussels. Now, moving on to the Thai politics, as Thailand's parliament today continues the debate on the national reconciliation proposal following yesterday's seven-hour session. The debate consisted of both government and opposition MPs exchanged strongly worded statements on highly sensitive issues. General Sonti Bunya Ratnakalin, chairman of the House National Reconciliation Committee, said it is necessary to end the current political conflicts which have destabilized the economy, society and national security based on a blueprint of Prapoklao Institute. Abhisit Wechashiwa, the opposition leader, said the blueprint states that there is no atmosphere for national reconciliation, therefore there should be a comprehensive series of dialogue before going ahead with a number of proposed measures. He said the government control House Committee on National Reconciliation has misrepresented the blueprint, especially in terms of issuing amnesty and other laws to nullify the Asset Examination Commission's action following the 2006 coup which overthrew the Thaksin government. The opposition party also insisted that it is not possible to nullify judicial rulings already handed down on criminal cases following the 2006 coup in which fugitive ex-Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat was sentenced to a two-year jail term or for abuse of power. On the other hand, Watana Meung Suk, the Pua Thai Party's MP, insisted that legal action following the coup were not acceptable and there must be measures to rehabilitate victims of political conflicts and violence before starting the process of national reconciliation. In Touch PLC, formerly known as the Chinkob, plans to enter the digital television market under one of the licenses to be issued by the National Broadcasting and Telecommunication Commission. Som Prasong Bunyashai, chairman of the telecom firm previously controlled by the Chinawat family, will form a joint venture to invest in the new broadcasting operation. According to a local news report, the firm will apply for an infrastructure license from the NBTC once conditions are announced. Afterwards, there will be a joint venture with the digital TV operators and content provider. The NBTC has said it plans to start switching TV transmission in Thailand from analog to digital technology later this year. This will lead to the availability of 50 to 60 new free TV channels using the digital compression technology. For commercial channels, there will be competitive biddings for infrastructure, content and other service providers. The first digital TV channel is expected to be launched later this year as a pilot scheme. 
The NBTC expects to complete the process of switching from analog to digital TV transmission over the next four to ten years. The National Broadcasting and Telecommunications Commission's Telecom Committee has told TrueMove to negotiate with the two other major cellular operators to seek ways to reduce their network interconnections charges. NBTC Commissioner Pratwit Lee Satha Pon Wongsa said yesterday that the committee had asked TrueMove to talk with Advanced Info Service or AIS and Total Access Communication DTAC to seek ways to reduce the interconnection rate. They bilaterally charge each other. If they fail to reach agreements, TrueMove can take the case to the NBTC. The move is the NBTC's effort to reduce cellular call rates further after the effect of its regulations capping the maximum mobile voice call tariff at the average 99 satang per minute for domestic calls. The regulations were published in the Royal Gazette on April the 3rd. The committee's advice to True Move came after it has asked NBTC to order all three major operators to adopt an interconnection rate of 50 satang per minute from the one baht per minute they mutually agreed on many years ago. However, the committee thinks it is better to have True Move negotiate with both operators first instead of ordering them. The NBTC interconnection regulations mandate the caller's network pay to the network of call receivers at mutually agreed rates. The new defunct National Telecommunications Commission or NTC also set the 50 stang per minute rate to be adopted by those failing to reach the rate agreements by themselves. The three operators agreed with CAT Telecom networks on the rate of 50 stang a minute. TrueMove earlier talked with AIS and DTAC to switch to 50 stang per minute, but AIS and DTAC disagreed, given three of them reached the agreement at one baht per minute a long time ago. If they have to adopt a new rate, they must renegotiate on actual cost, which might not end at 50 stang per minute. NBTC regulations for a maximum voice call rate apply to only AIS and DTAC as they were classified as significant market players or SMPs in the cellular industry last year by the NTC. An SMP is one with more than 25% market share. Therefore, their new call packages to be launched from now on must comply with the regulations. The existing call packages with all call rate over 99 stang per minute can remain until December 31st. Pravit added that the cellular operators still have flexibility to offer some packages, such as one charging two baht for the first three minutes of a call, and that would not average out at more than 99 stang per minute. AS Chief Executive Officer Vichian Megdragan said the company was ready to comply with the regulations. He added that AIS average call rate was 70 stang per minute. According to an NBTC study, the average call fee for DTAC during the first nine months of last year was 76 stang per minute, followed by TrueMove at 67 stang and AIS at 54 stang. <laughs> 